STS-37, the eighth flight of the Space Shuttle Atlantis, was a six-day mission with the primary objective of launching the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory the second of the Great Observatories program which included the Visible Spectrum Hubble Space Telescope, the Chandra X-ray Observatory and the Infrared Spitzer Space Telescope. The mission also featured two spacewalks, the first since 1985. Topic Crew Topic Spacewalks Ross and Apt, Eva One Eva One Start, the seventh of April, nineteen ninety one Eva One End, the seventh of April, nineteen ninety one Duration four hours, twenty six minutes Ross and Apt, Eva 2. Eva 2 start, the 8th of April 1991. Eva 2 end, the 8th of April 1991. Duration: 5 hours 47 minutes. Topic: <laughs> Crew seating arrangements. Topic: <laughs> Preparations and launch. The STS-37 mission was successfully launched from launch pad 39B at 9 hours 22 minutes and 44 seconds a.m. est on April 5, 1991 from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Resumption of the countdown after the T-9 minute hold was delayed about 4 minutes 45 seconds because of two possible weather condition violations of the launch commit criteria LCC. The first concerned the cloud ceiling being 500 feet less than the minimum of 8,000 feet for a return to launch site RTLS abort, and the second concerned the possible weather condition wind effects on blast propagation. Both conditions were found acceptable and the launch countdown proceeded to a satisfactory launch to an inclination of 28.45 degrees. Launch weight 116,040 kilograms, 255,820 pounds. Topic: Compton Gamma Ray Observatory. The primary payload, the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory (CGRO), was deployed on flight day 3. CGRO's high gain antenna failed to deploy on command. It was finally freed and manually deployed by Ross and Apt during an unscheduled contingency spacewalk, the first since April 1985. The following day, the two astronauts performed the first scheduled spacewalk since November 1985 to test means for astronauts to move themselves and equipment about while maintaining the then planned space station freedom. CGRO science instruments were burst and transient source experiment BATSE, imaging Compton telescope COMPTEL, energetic gamma ray experiment telescope EGRET, and oriented scintillation spectrometer experiment OS. CGRO was the second of NASA's four great observatories. The Hubble Space Telescope, deployed during mission STS-31 in April 1990, was the first. CGRO was launched on a two-year mission to search for the high-energy celestial gamma-ray emissions, which cannot penetrate Earth's atmosphere. At about 35,000 pounds, CGRO was the heaviest satellite to be deployed into low Earth orbit from the shuttle. It was also designed to be the first satellite that could be refueled in orbit by shuttle crews. Five months after deployment, NASA renamed the satellite the Arthur Holly Compton Gamma Ray Observatory, or Compton Observatory, after the Nobel Prize winning physicist who did important work in gamma ray astronomy. <laughs> <laughs> Spacewalks The first U.S. extravehicular activity EVA or spacewalk since 1985 was performed by mission specialists Jerry L. Ross and J. Apt after six failed attempts to deploy the satellite's high-gain antenna. Repeated commands by ground controllers at the Payload Operations Control Center, Goddard Space Flight Center, Greenbelt, MD, and maneuvering of Atlantis and its remote 
Manipulator system RMS robot arm, as well as CGRO's antenna dish, were to no avail in dislodging the boom. Ross and Apt were prepared for such a contingency, and Ross freed the antenna boom within 17 minutes after beginning the spacewalk. It was the first in scheduled contingency EVA since STS-51D in April 1985. Deployment occurred about 1835 Eastern Standard Time, approximately four half a hour after it was scheduled. The following day, on 8 April 1991, Ross and Apt made the first scheduled EVA since mission STS-61B in November 1985. The spacewalk was to test methods of moving crew members and equipment around the future space station Freedom. One of the experiments was to evaluate manual, mechanical and electrical power methods of moving carts around the outside of large structures in space. Although all three methods worked, the astronauts reported that propelling the cart manually or hand over hand worked best. With both AVAs, Ross and Apt logged 10 hours and 49 minutes walking in space during STS-37. Crew members also reported success with secondary experiments. During the second EVA, a stainless steel palm restraint bar punctured the pressure bladder of Apt's right glove. However, the astronaut's hand and silk comfort glove partially sealed the hole, resulting in no detectable depressurization. In fact, the puncture was not noticed until post-flight examination. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Additional payloads and experiments. Secondary payloads included crew and equipment translation aids which involved scheduled six-hour space walk by astronauts Ross and Apt see above, Ascent Particle Monitor APM, Shuttle Amateur Radio Experiment 2 SAREX2, Protein Crystal Growth PCG, Bioserve, Instrumentation Technology Associates Materials Dispersion Apparatus BIMDA, Radiation Monitoring Equipment 3 RMEL, and Air Force Maui Optical Site AMOS experiment. Among the other payloads flown was the first flight of the Bioserve, Instrumentation Technology Associates Materials Dispersion Apparatus to explore the commercial potential of experiments in the biomedical, manufacturing processes and fluid sciences fields, and the protein crystal growth experiment, which has flown eight times before in various forms. Astronaut pilot Kenneth Cameron was the primary operator of the Shuttle Amateur Radio Experiment although all five crew members participated as amateur radio operators. It was arguably the first time that the astronauts received fast-scan amateur television video from the Ham Radio Club Station at JSC. Landing. The 11th of April 1991, 6 hours 55 minutes and 29 seconds Pacific Daylight Saving Time, Runway 33, Edwards Air Force Base, CA. Rollout distance, 6,364 feet. Rollout time, 56 seconds. Landing originally scheduled for 10 April 1991, but delayed one day due to weather conditions at Edwards and Kennedy Space Center KSC. Orbiter returned to KSC the 18th of April 1991. Landing weight 86227 kilograms, 190098 pounds. Due to an incorrect call on winds aloft, Atlantis landed 623 feet short of the lakebed runway's threshold marking. This did not present a problem since the orbiter landed on the dry lake bed of Edwards and a problem was not obvious to most viewers. Had the landing been attempted at the Kennedy Space Center, the result would have been a touchdown on the paved under run preceding the runway and would have been much more obvious. Landing speed was 168 kias, 13 knots faster than the slowest landing of the shuttle program, STS-28 za 155 kias. Topic: <laughs> Mission Insignia. The three stars on the top and seven stars on the bottom of the insignia symbolize the flight's numerical designation in the Space Transportation System's mission sequence. The stars also represented the amateur radio term, 73, or, best regards, 
consistent with the fact that the entire crew had become licensed and operated the SAREX experiment while on orbit. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Wake-up calls. NASA began its long-standing tradition of waking up astronauts with music during Apollo 15. Each track is specially chosen, often by the astronauts' families, and usually has a special meaning to an individual member of the crew, or is applicable to their daily activities. See also List of human spaceflights List of Space Shuttle missions Outline of Space Science Space Shuttle Topic. External links NASA Mission Summary STS-37 Video Highlights Topic. Notes This article incorporates public domain material from websites or documents of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration.